I'm sitting here at LAX. I'm waiting for my girlfriend actually to move here from Australia. She lands in about an hour and I'm so excited right now. I can't wait. But on the way to LAX, for anybody who's flown through here, you notice a lot of people who have <laughs> just seemingly, they're very anxious and it reminded me of something. You know, I have, I have about an hour before she lands. So I'd like to talk a bit about how I have dealt with anxiety and ultimately learned how to conquer it for the most part in my own life. And it's, it's something very simple in theory, a little more difficult to, to be cognizant and practice it consistently enough to, to rid yourself of, of, of anxiety. So anxiety takes many forms. So it usually inevitably stems from something from our, from our mind, a thought, right? And that thought ultimately is a seed that can really grab onto your, your, your psychology and your physiology as well. So what I always do to deal with my, uh, what I have done to deal with my anxiety before is I interrupt the physiological state that I'm in. So most people, when they're anxious or, or, or they're feeling excited or, or really nervous about something, they, we tend to breathe about 24 breaths in a, in a minute. Now that's a lot. 24 breaths in a minute is almost double what somebody who would be calm and mindful would breathe. A calm and mindful person usually takes about 10 to 12 breaths a minute. So think about that for a second. Your, your psychological state is affecting your physiological state, which is in turn affecting more of your psychological state. So if we interrupt our physiological state by breathing and then we slow down our breath, go, all right, Travis. I like to breathe in four seconds. Breathe out four seconds. And you do that just for one minute. And what's gonna happen to your anxiety? Try it right now, pause this video. If you're anxious right now and you're dealing with a bit of anxiety right now, pause the video and see what happens. Just take, just take two breaths with me right now and see what happens to yourself. Even if you are calm right now, just. I don't know about you, but I feel, <laughs> I feel awesome right now, and I've had a cup of coffee, a big cup, so I feel great. If you do that for a minute, I guarantee you're gonna start interrupting your, your physiological state, and you're gonna breathe like somebody who's mindful, mellow, calm, enjoying life, rather than somebody who's anxious, right? So the next step to conquer it ultimately in the moment is we have to deal with the psychological state, right? Inevitably, most times for me, just breathing properly, breathing uh, in a mindful way and being cognizant of my breathing, breathing in four seconds and out four seconds, 12, 10 to 12 breaths a minute, will do enough for me to relax and then understand that my thoughts are only pre, you know, the, these, these unfounded concepts of my imagination that I put into the future, right? Because anxiety is about worrying about the future, right? When it gets down to it. So the next thing to do is I wanna analyze my thoughts. So what am I thinking? What's making me anxious? Is there evidence to support this thought? 95% of the time there's not. It's unfounded. So it's much easier after I've dealt with my breathing to, to analyze the thought and say, I can let that thought go. It's like, I think of thoughts like quicksands are unfounded thoughts like quicksand. What's the best thing to do when you're in quicksand? If you fight the thought, if you're fighting, and if you're fighting in quicksand, you're going to drown, just like your thoughts. If you're fighting these thoughts and fighting these thoughts and fighting these thoughts, you're going to drown in them. And you're gonna perpetuate more anxiety. But if you realize it's an unfounded thought, what's the best thing to do in quicksand is just to let go. And what happens when you let go in quicksand? You slowly rise to the top, and you're able to breathe again. But what if there is evidence to be, to support your anxious thought. About 5% of the time for, for most of myself and my clients, I, I find that that's the case. So usually this is enough, just what I've, what I've taught you right now. What if you, you're in that 5% where there is something to be really anxious about, right? Then I ask that you, like myself, and I teach my clients, is to be solution oriented not problem oriented. So if you have a, a challenge that you're facing in your life that you're anxious about, don't focus on the problem. Easier said than done. But be mindful of the solution to this problem. 
come up with five ways that you can tackle this problem. And you don't have to act on any of the five, just five ways. I want you to challenge you to five. Five ways, get creative, have fun, think like a kid. How can I be solution oriented in dealing with this problem? Tackle, choose to tackle one. So if you do that, if you're cognizant of your breathing and you breathe 10 to 12 times in a minute, right? You take care of the physiological state of being anxious. If you analyze your thoughts, and, and, and decide, are, are these thoughts, is there a reality, is there evidence to support these thoughts? No. And if there is, what do we do? We become solution oriented in dealing with these. Because anxiety is all about the future, inevitably. So just understanding that in, in and of itself and learning how to tackle it. This is how I've dealt with anxiety in my life. This is how I've taught, taught people to deal with anxiety in their own life. And it has completely over the years, abolished it. And yes, occasionally now, I still do get anxious. Um, and this is how I deal with it. And it, it, it will take no more than, than, than a minute or two. And another thing, while you're breathing too, another good thing to do while you're breathing is when you breathe in, you say, you say peace. And as you're breathing out, you say happiness. You're thinking this, peace. Happiness. Peace. And maybe after 30 seconds of that, you, you, while you're breathing, do these thoughts have any factual basis to support them? No. My thoughts are like quicksands. I'm gonna let them go and float to the top. And if there is factual basis to support these thoughts, that's a good thing too. Because maybe there's a branch hanging out from that quicksand that you can grab onto. You can't grab onto that branch unless you're solution oriented though. Because if you're problem oriented, you're gonna be slashing around, um, drowning in quicksand, okay? That's how I've dealt with anxiety and I really wanted to share that with you for a long time and I'm happy to have the time today to be able to do that. Um, so, um, wish me luck, my girlfriend's gonna be here in about, I don't know, 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm so excited. So um, as always, if you have any questions about this, um, you want to have a chat about it, anything like that, just leave a comment down below. I will get back to you. Um, I love working with people on this because it's helped my life and so much. It's helped me be, be at a place where I'm so present that I'm able to, to light my life up on fire and work with people to do the same, right? It's, it's hard to be lit up on fire if we're dealing with, with, with something like anxiety. And so this is such an easy way to begin dealing with it that I really, really have been wanting to share this with you for a long time and I'm happy I did. Much love as always. Be good, be awesome. Be great, baby.